Hi, I'm John from Just Whiskey. If you like today's show, please give it the thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And speaking of subscribers, thanking, thank you for the onslaught of new subscribers that came on board in the last 24 hours. Thanks to the one and only Whiskey Lock, who just reached his 1,000 subscriber mark. He surpassed his 1,000 subscriber mark and... Um, I've always recommended and continue to recommend you viewers to check in and tune in to watch Whiskey Lock. Um, congratulations to him. He's doing a great job. Um, and one of his other shout outs was to Sowleg, um, who just <laughs> serendipitously uh, recently reviewed this Gauldrons which is what I'm going to review. And what I found is, and I'm not comparing myself to, but it's there's some of these whiskey tubers, like uh, with me or Whiskey Lock or Sour Leg today or, or even Ralphie. And again, I'm not comparing myself, but there seems to be the serendipity uh, parallel <laughs> universe that... Um, that I coincide with and I'm like uh, yeah I'm gonna do I'm thinking of two or three shows ahead of time and then Whiskey Lock will beat me to the punch you know with his uh, Spring Bank alternatives which I have one uh, on one of two of those shows on the horizon myself <laughs> I have to kind of retweak it a little bit now um, so yeah um, let's talk about the Gauldrons and why did I buy this <laughs> It's be, the main reason, the only reason I bought this is because um, Flat Cap Whiskey, okay, they haven't um, been doing too many recent YouTube views, but last year, they, this is one of their picks for Whiskey of the Year, this uh, Gauldrons, which is a um, non-age stated blend from Douglas Lang, and this Gauldrons, is batch two and it's non-chill filtered non-colored comes in at 46.2 percent abv and the claim the fame to this is that it's a campbelltown blend i think i've got your attention now so and so in flat cap they were raving over this now i don't know which batch they had this is batch two which came out in 2020 so i don't know which batch they were uh so taken over by but um but this retails in my area for about sixty dollars which is quite a bit to pay for a non-age dated um blend and on the front of the label it says a classic campbelltown character of honeycomb with a salty tang okay um I'll have to admit, now this has been, I'm way past the shoulder on this. This is a, a chameleon for sure. Um, every time I pour a, a dram, it's a different take on it, um, which isn't necessarily a good thing with this particular one. But I uh, watched the review and we'll come to some kind of conclusion here. The most interesting thing about this really is the story of the Gauldrons on the back, which I'm not going to read, um, but it is interesting. If you want to read, you can Google the Gauldrons and find out all about it. But there are um, there, there is a description on the back of the label here, and it says, the complex knows not. It doesn't say not. I'm saying not. There is This is not a complex nose. The complex nose reveals honeycomb with brown sugar, sea salt, and a late hint of subtle spices. The palate is mouth coating, not, <clears throat> and sweet, not, with a peppery warmth developing to a beachy and maritime character. The finish brings vanilla and oak with puffs of smoke and a biscuity sweetness. All right. Now, nothing against Douglas Lang because um, 
a previously Douglas, a previous reviewed Douglas Lang that I did, uh, the Double Barrel, which is a um, Isla and Highland uh, blend. I really enjoyed this a lot, and I reviewed it. You can check out my channel for the review uh, of this. Um, so Douglas Lang certainly puts out some some good stuff, um, and this and this was one of them. Um, so this retails for about sixty dollars in my area. It's non-age dated, um, and it is a blend. So I'm wondering. So when I first opened this up, like I do always, as soon as I pull this cap off, I put my nose to it, and I'm like, "Where's the nose?" Like it, it was non-existent really and even the first couple of drams i'm like the nose is like absent this if you if you buy this give it time in the bottle let this thing open up it needs time and air 100 percent. but when i first nosed it the first glass i poured two or three weeks ago the and the taste the first thing I got was cherry cough drops um, and that was pretty much it and it was hot um, okay but now this is time a little time to open up on the nose you do get a little bit of that chalky vanilla but it's it's a subdued nose um, it's a light nose it's lacking in uh, permutation and sow leg who, who just reviewed this was talking about the Campbelltown Funk. I'm not picking up any Campbelltown Funk whatsoever. And you may ask, what is a funk or what's Campbelltown Funk? What Campbelltown Funk or a funk to me is a barnyard, farmyard, grassy, vegetal with a maybe a, even a hint of sulfur. Um, I don't, I think this is all ex-bourbon in my opinion. Um, it doesn't look like there's any, uh, ex-sherry cask in this. Um, and I'm not picking up any sherry notes on the palate or the nose at all on this. I really think this is, um, predominantly, uh, very young, um, spirity, ex-bourbon, almost new makey even at 46.2 it comes in a a a bit hot just a, a tad hot i'll give it a little a little leeway there a tad hot spirity youthful, um, new makey, um, and it's got a dryness to it. I'm not really picking up any sweetness. Um, dry, definitely salinity in there. Um, you're getting salt. On the finish, there's a, a bit mintiness going on. Um, and the finish I would describe as surprisingly so um, it's it's a solid medium finish I'll give it that um, with a slight peppery slight astringent dry finish to it I I just don't find this personally for my taste I don't find it to be very interesting Flat Cap voted it Whiskey of the Year. I had high expectations, especially from Campbelltown. So, I mean, it's either Springbank or uh, Glen Scotia or Glen Guile, who makes Kill Karen, as far as new make. If I had to guess, I would... I'm not picking up any, for me, any Springbank uh, at all. Um, I'm, if I had to guess, and, and I don't have a lot of experience with Glen Scotia, but 
if I had to guess, just through process of elimination, that it's very youthful Glen Scotia that were in uh, not very active casks that would, they're just trying, all right, let's make a blend out of this. Um, so my contention with this is that you're, pen, you're spending $60 in my area. Um, in my opinion, this is worth maybe half that. This is a $30 to $35 bottle, if you ask me. But for $60, well, before I get into the price comparison, this reminds me a little bit of Highland Park Full Volume 17, which I was not... I was underwhelmed with as well, um, which is um, all ex-bourbon. If you like Highland Park full volume, then I don't think you're going to mind, mind this, okay? So, again, different palettes. But for $60, for a non-age stated youthful blend, for $60, you can get Craig Allocky 13 single malt. For sixty dollars, you can get Buna Haben Twelve Single Malt. For sixty dollars, you can get a Ben Romick Ten. You can even get a Ben Romick Peat Smoke for about sixty dollars. For sixty dollars, you can get a Klein Leash Fourteen. For sixty dollars, you can get a Lechag Ten. In my opinion, this is not worth sixty dollars. And even if it was half that price, at 30 or 35 I will not be going out and buying another um, a bottle of this. It is a chameleon, and it is improving over time ever so slightly. Um, Sowleg, he does a different scoring system. He gives it uh, a 1 through 10, and he rated this a 7. But I sensed that... It was a generous seven. That's just my perception from watching his review. Um, my scale is different. I kind of align more with traditional, like kind of the Ralphie range, where like 80 is kind of in the low end and 95 is incredible. Um, so I, I would give this... Uh, I, I really don't even want to rate it, but if I had to rate it, for me, for my taste, I'll give it maybe an 81 to 82. Um, and that's my review, and I'm sticking to it. So if you like today's show, please give it a thumb up, like, and subscribe. Consider becoming a Patreon with the link in the description below. And this is my 94th review I've been at this for a year and a half now, and my 100th review is coming up in the next few weeks, and it's going to be something special. Um, I have a very special bottle that I'm going to be cracking open, and I'm going to start the intro with me on the drums. So it's going to be a little bit of a 100th show celebration, so subscribe so you won't miss the big show. So hats off to you all. And take care.